This is Warps, and welcome to the Terminal Guide. Whether you want to do fancy stuff like this, or just go visit your dad in jail, the Terminal is how you do it. Now I'm going to show you all my fancy tricks. I have gained over 250 hours of playtime, a lot of it being on the Terminal. Now the very basics are you just go on the Terminal, and type what you want to do, like moons. And if you want to go to experimentation, you can shorten it down to like exper or exp and then confirm, which can just be con even. So you go to store, say you want something, pro flashlights, you type pro. You want more, you put a number, pro eight. Confirm. There you go. There is a more convenient way than these buttons to switch around the camera target and a more convenient way to put in the commands. If you open up the terminal, you can type view monitor or have a macro for it like I do, where it's one button. And then you can type switch or use a macro like I do. And if you don't have any macro software or are too lazy to set one up, you can copy paste the word switch into the terminal like this. See, I just have switch on my control V and I'm just control Ving it into the terminal every time I want to switch, which isn't slow, but it's one step below the convenience of a macro. So you can do what you want there. It's not that bad to type view monitor in every once in a while, since you will need to toggle it back off to view the store. For example, if you wish to purchase a tactical drop pod to distract dogs, see this little F2 right here coming up. This is linked to a door. Now that door can be toggled open or closed provided it has power as long as you type that into the terminal. The landmines and turrets will also have a little letter and a number associated with them that you can use to turn them off. Now you'll see a lot of dots on the radar like these and it can be pretty helpful to know how to differentiate those. We'll cover that as well. So here you can see me toggling off this turret from the terminal by typing I1 and hitting enter. That will shut the turret down for not that long, just a matter of seconds. And when that turret is coming back online, you need to send that command again right when it comes back up. You have a very small amount of time or it will shoot. Here you'll see some various timings for closing a door as someone is passing through it. The doors have a brief delay as they shut and doing it too early or late can heavily influence what you're trying to do. If you're trying to shut a door as a player is passing through that is being chased by a monster, your timing window to do so is very narrow and you can accidentally either shut them in with the monster or not block the monster. So look at these timings. All in all, you usually have to close the door slightly before the player reaches it, but it does depend on their speed and the speed of the monster. Coil heads, for example, can zoom through a gap in a door almost instantly. So me and my friend here have identified a dead end past this C7 door. And what we do with this is we are currently baiting a bracken to enter that room by having my friend face the wall to encourage it to approach. And what we plan to do is as the bracken is approaching, I will teleport him and then go up and close the door, sealing the bracken. There can only be one bracken on a map max. And if you seal it in a dead end like this, you don't have to deal with it anymore. It's gone. And the three power level it takes up, which can be a lot, is completely locked up in that room and you don't have to deal with it anymore. So using these techniques is pretty nice. If it's a bracken, you'll pretty much have to teleport or it's too lethal, but other monsters can just be led in a room and then you just jump over them and lock them up far easier than this. You also may notice the monitor on the right actually shows what's happening in there. And that is because I have the helmet cameras mod, which I will put in the description. This allows you to see the view of your current radar target, which is a radar booster right now, which I'm kind of using as a Bracken jail monitoring camera. Now, there's a little issue in knowing when to teleport someone. It's very tricky. It's tricky. So 
you want to bring back the corpses, right? But you don't want to bring back alive people that just look like corpses. There's some ways you can tell. It's usually through context clues. As you can see here, my friend's corpse is the same brightness as it was when he started because that's just how the lighting is at that time. You can sometimes tell because the lighting will change and their little dot will no longer have little highlights, but it's variable. It, it depends on the lighting of the map. So it's not a surefire method. If they haven't moved in like over a minute, they're probably dead, but it, rare cases, you know, you don't want to teleport them back too early. Some people might want to get teleported back because they're scared. You just tell them, no, you'll bring back their corpse when they die and they need to make money. So make them go back in. If you have to just use the inverse teleporter because we got to hit that quota. Sealing monsters is very strong in this game if you do it correctly. And when you're watching people go through a facility like this, you should be on the lookout for these red lines on the walls. Those are vents. What you saw there from me sealing the D6 door is I have isolated that vent. So if anything spawns in there, it will not be a threat. It is locked away, sealed. Due to each monster taking up part of the max cap, that can spawn on a map based on how powerful they are with more powerful ones taking up more room. A monster being sealed away is a very big improvement to the stage. So the circuit box can free monsters if it is not on. And if you lose power via circuit box or someone taking the apparatus out, which is even worse because it can't be fixed, the sealed monsters will be free and you can no longer toggle the doors. The turrets will still work, the landmines will still work, the lights will be off, and the doors will be disabled. They will all be open, which can be a benefit in some niche cases. You can use the circuit box to open some doors if you don't have a terminal guy. But yeah, this will free them. For the switches in the circuit box, they should all be on the left if you want them to be on. They can occasionally spawn off, which is annoying for the terminal guy. So you can ask your teammates to help there. Pay attention to the walls here as they're walking through. You'll notice they're not fully revealed. On some maps they are, and on some they have to walk into the area so you see what's going on, which can make it much harder to make good decisions as the terminal user. This is based on the weather conditions outside, and I don't like that personally. I think it's kind of a dumb mechanic, but that's just how it is. So if it's dark outside, it's dark inside. Now, I kind of like my terminal set up like this just because it looks nice. However, I have been considering over here with the mod because now I can look at this middle monitor and watch what they're doing, but also see the radar and the terminal. Now, what you can also do if you are worried about your allies getting you killed is put it here. Now, this spot has some advantages, which I'll show in a moment, but what you can also do is if you are being haunted in the ship, which is fairly frequent if you're the host and if you're alone, because if you're alone in the ship, your insanity increases the fastest and the ghost will probably haunt you. So if you are on a higher tier moon, what you can do is use the cupboard as a safe spot. If you press B to highlight the cupboard like this, you can now walk through it from the sides. You can't from the doors, but you can from the sides and the back. And what you can do is walk into it, then jump and just scroll your mouse wheel or confirm the placement by using B and you can do this. You just jump, scroll, and now you can crouch and you are now on top of the cupboard. This can occasionally help from dogs. Don't rely on it, they can still kill you up here. But the ghost girl can't get you, because she is short. Here's why this spot is so powerful. Hello? Hello? Now dogs can walk through furniture if you make a sound while behind the furniture, but I didn't make the sound, so I'm fine. Yeah, that worked pretty well. There you heard me taunting the dogs to showcase this kind of safe spot in the back corner of the ship. Back there is considered outside. That's a pretty good spot. You have to be careful where you're talking exactly and where you stand, because you can die through the wall there. You're nothing. You're nothing. And that's what happens if you speak when you are behind furniture. All right, let's get into the tools you have access to 
as terminal user. You can use the teleporter to pull back your teammates, dead or alive, from anywhere to the teleporter. They will drop all of their items. Great way to recover corpses so you lose less money. Now, you can also use the teleporter to save people that have a snare flea on their head if they have no way to deal with it themselves. And this will kill the snare flea and save them. You can also use this to take them out of the grasp of giants. As long as you start the teleport kind of close to when they get grabbed, usually hopefully a bit before. I also did something else in that clip. You can see this yellow button. That is the inverse teleporter. If you press the yellow button shortly after, anyone that's on it will be sent into the facility randomly with no items, which is a great way to make money. But if you hit the yellow button, then the red button shortly after like this, you can teleport someone onto it and then send them in randomly. Here's an example of a save from a giant grasp, which is a little cooler since I actually have the monitor helmet cam. There's also the radar boosters, which you can use to look at on the radar, and it's not that useful. You can ping it as well by typing ping and then their name, ping blue in this example, and it'll make a noise that's kind of like where my friend is. It's not that great. Yeah, these could use a buff. Maybe if you could teleport them in with the inverse and teleport them out with the teleporter, they'd actually be useful. But in their current state, kind of eh. So this is the loud horn. This can be useful. You can hear this anywhere on the map, including in the facility. Now you can make a code like one short pull means so-and-so, two short pulls means other thing. Long pull means something else entirely. You can make this be whatever you want. So you could set up a system like one specific crewmate. If I do a short pull, that means they're going the wrong way and should turn. This allows you to steer them in the right direction. If you don't have a walkie-talkie even, for example, you can still communicate with them using this. The long pull could be used to tell them there's danger on the ship, which also could be good because this can make dogs go to the opposite side of the ship back there away from the door. So that can be used to make the door a little safer if you want to anger the dogs and make them bark at the other side of that wall. Here's a breakdown of that first clip again. Now, what you can do with the landmines is if you have a threat you want to deal with and you for some reason don't have a shovel or it's just a difficult to deal with threat, you can get a teammate to stand on a landmine and just teleport them out at the right time, which will kill the threat. It's pretty useful. Okay, time to start getting into identifying the various dots on the terminal screen. This smallish dot, not the smallest, but smallish, kind of medium, is usually a snare flea. They like to sit still. Hoarding bugs are very small on the radar and will often be carrying something, including a corpse, like in this case. You can see my friend's corpse being moved around, and they like to just collect stuff. Now the larger one that you'll see in a facility is a slime. There's also a lizard dog trapped behind it. Slimes like to block other things. These need to be sealed behind a regular door or a pressure door. Can you guess what this dot is on the map? It's moving kind of slow. It's a little bigger than usual, kind of player sized. It's a spore lizard. Non threatening. Nice to see. This one is a thumper. You can usually tell because they have a bit of slippery movement, especially when they change direction, or they can charge insanely fast around if they think someone is close. So these are a little difficult to tell apart from some because a lot of the most dangerous threats are at this size. You can ask teammates if they hear thumping or not. And I've got a few examples of brackens approaching here. As you can see, they're kind of a slow and steady type approach. They can also have a variable direction they come from based on where you're moving or looking. They have pretty advanced AI. You can see this one creeping up on him from behind. A single glance is enough to send him on his way. But these are very similar in size to a few other threats, such as snare fleas, thumpers, 
and one that I'm about to show you, these will sneak and sometimes even wait. They will just wait around a corner somewhere and basically be a landmine. Can you guess which of these is the Bracken? Because it's very similar to this enemy. The Jester in box form moves incredibly similarly. Main difference is that the Bracken would be heading towards someone while a Jester would be patrolling. This is what a spider looks like when you catch it mid-web spinning. It will just stare at you as long as it sees you, and it will move if it loses sight of you and continue its job. Now, once it's done with that, it'll just chill on the wall, and its radar blip will become some little oval shape. Now, this one's a little hard to identify as well, because you don't usually see them going around like this it almost looks like a bracken but just a little too fast now what you're seeing there is a coil head in its patrolling state without it seeing someone you're probably used to just seeing it zoom insanely fast at people and stop but it does have a patrolling state if it happens not to see someone and it's almost brackeny and jesters kind of an annoying enemy these little boxy dudes will begin following someone if they spot them and a little while after that they will begin cranking it and once they finish their little song they will erupt into a skull guy and ramp up speed insanely fast over a short period of time they know where everybody is so they will kill everyone unless you can safe spot these by sitting on a rail or in some place they can't reach you kind of just have to teleport everyone out if there is a jester that's going to go off and people aren't aware due to lack of communication or anything like that. So yeah, just teleport them out. You can always teleport them back in with the inverse. It, it'll be worse if they die. You can delay these with a zap gun, but it's not really worth it most of the time because you should just be evacuating anyway. If they go off when nobody's inside like this, which you're seeing with the camera, they will just go back to box form. So that's how you deal with them or seal them away. This is an Earth Leviathan, or as I like to call them, sandworms. You pretty much just warn your teammates, and if they live, they live. There's him jumping out. There's also a giant here chasing my teammate in this clip. You can hear those a lot faster than you can see them on the radar. Pretty obvious when they're around. It's kind of the same with dogs. They're just little medium blips on the map. You'll be able to hear them if you can see them. So they're kind of obvious. Little tidbit about the baboon hawks, though. The different sizes of baboon hawks have a different dot size. Doesn't mean too much, but if you see variable dot sizes, this is why. Now for the forbidden macro section. If you really want to be a hacker man's, you can modify certain macros on the fly to make it so you can shut down groups of turrets or mines nearly indefinitely with certain timings that I'll show in a bit. This is an example of me turning them all off. And the thing is, this macro will repeat on a specific timing that's divisible by the duration of shutdown by the landmines and the turrets, so they'll actually both be shut down most of the time. So I use the original Logitech gaming software, which you can download if you want. They have the G Hub now, Logitech G Hub. I don't like that program, so I use the older one. And this is how I have it set up. It's a text block macro that's set on toggle with a specific delay to make it so landmines and turrets get shut off at a pretty good timing. This delay could need to be changed based on how many things you have shutting off at once. This is a pretty good starter delay though and will work for most cases. Take note there is an enter after that last code because you have to press enter to put in the codes, right? So each of the enters in this macro is being considered. You can set this up with other macro styles but you will have to space it similar to how I have it if you use a different format. Now for the global shutdown macro. This is loud and everyone around you can hear it. it sounds like this. We'll go ahead and mute that. This goes through every single possible code from A0 to A9 to 
Z9. So this hits everything. It's timed in a specific way so that it just loops and the turrets are shut down almost the instant they come back up. This is only really viable if the apparatus is out on facility missions or if you are on a mansion that does not have doors. This is definitely probably a forbidden macro. It would be notably good on Dine and perhaps Rend, depending on the spawns, if there's actually a lot of turrets. I would use the other macro most of the time because this is a little much. This is how the global shutdown macro looks. I just have a text block where I type literally everything. I went to chat GPT for this and had it give me the full list so I could just copy paste it in. But I'll leave this list in a paste bin in the video description because this is kind of annoying to get and is not feasible to type out. I do have to note that these macros, the timings, it's all very spammy and depending on your latency to the server or your FPS, it's possible it could mistype some of the codes which could get people killed in some situations. So, you know, do it at your own risk. They're pretty consistent, but things can happen. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Here's some other videos you might want to watch. They're bangers, I assure you.